So here in a couple days, I'm gonna be going uh, to New York City with both my sons. And the older one has opted out of any and all travel uh, prior to now. So like a lot of people who are not well-traveled, he's worried about packing. What can I take? What should I take? What's allowed to be taken? So we're gonna go through some of that right now. Now, a while back, I did a video on uh, packing a backpack for travel that was just specifically COVID related. And I said I would later do one on uh, just the backpack itself. So here it is. And there's really not much to it. This isn't going to take much time. Uh, we're going to go through the, the clothing bag in a minute. But for now, let's go through this. I always have a laptop. Chances are you've either got a laptop or an iPad or some other device like that that you want to carry on the plane with you. And you'll also need a charging device for that. And in my case, I also have a wireless mouse. And I travel for work, and so I have some other gadgets that, that fit into here as well. But for the most part, you probably won't be going around with a bunch of Ethernet cables, USB, RS-232, and the whole other cornucopia of, of alphabet soup of acronyms that I have to carry around. But all things being equal, you will need your device a charger and maybe a peripheral thing for that device, right? I also carry, and you should too, charging cable for your phone, as well as the little uh, wall plug-in for your phone as well. Nothing sucks more than getting somewhere and having your stuff go dead because you didn't bring a charger. And then God forbid you have to pay for that airport prices at the airport store for the charger. Also, this is really handy because a little zip up thing here. As soon as I lock my truck at the airport while I'm walking into the airport, I slip my home keys. Like I don't need my house key and my car key when I'm traveling. So I just put it at the bottom of this pocket, zip it shut and forget about it until I get home. So I just carry some wipes. These are just some disposable uh, wipes in a soft sided bag that makes a lot of noise. I always carry at the bottom of this a small umbrella, which is just handy to have. I needed that the other day, in fact. Extra masks. You never know when you're gonna lose your mask or it's just gonna get nasty and need to be laundered. Carry some extra masks. A little Ziploc bag and a handful of masks is always a handy thing to have. I still have my little uh, first aid kit thing. It's just got some wipes and a few band-aids and some Neosporin just in case. I always have something to write with and something to write on. So these go right in here, along with all the wipes that the uh, airline people keep giving me that I keep saying, I have a million of these. They're like, take it. I'm like, fine. Any prescription medications you may have and make sure that it has your name on it and that it's legit medication. Funny thing is the government actually takes that stuff seriously. Now, if you're someone that's prone to anxiety and you are nervous about flying and you have a prescription for that, completely legit. But let's say that you like to use alternative uh, methods. Uh, if you're a CBD oil person, also perfectly legit because there's nothing in there that the federal government dislikes. But if you are a person who's, yeah, say you like to take an occasional illicit toke for medicinal purposes, of course. The problem is while many states have legalized marijuana, the federal government has not. So if, you know, God forbid you're dumb enough to actually bring a joint on the plane, you're just asking for like a federal arrest at that point. But edibles are just as bad, okay? Don't don't bring anything that's not like prepackaged food. Don't bring anything that's not labeled and don't try to get away and be shifty. Now I'm sure there's a bunch of you out there going, ah, I do it all the time, it's fine. And that's cool for you, but I wouldn't risk it. Uh, get some CBD oil, Get a prescription for uh, Xanax or something else to help take the edge off if flying makes you anxious. Because if it does, man, I, I understand, and that's cool. you got to take care of yourself. 
but don't try to bring any sort of um, uh, self-prescribed things on the plane. Don't borrow your auntie's um, Prozac and bring that with you. If it's not prescribed to you, you could get in really deep, deep shit really fast by transporting uh, drugs that, that are either illegal or become illegal because they weren't prescribed to you across state lines in an airplane. Uh, that's some serious stuff there. Moving on. Now your legit airlines like American, United, Delta, they're gonna let you carry on uh, the plane one carry-on item and one personal item. Uh, they usually consider a carry-on item like a rollerboard bag, which I do not recommend. Those wheels do not fit. I think I might already mention that. Um, but, but a small suitcase or bag or what have you that they intend to go in the overhead compartment. Your personal item is usually something like a purse that will fit neatly underneath the uh, seat or one of the small dog carriers if your personal item is a dog. This counts as a personal item. What you wanna do is make sure that uh, this bag is small enough to fit under the seat in front of you when you're seated on the airplane. And it should slip under there with relative ease and should also um, go completely under the seat. It can't be sticking out. Again, they were real anal about that. Um, so I always carry my shoulder bag uh, for the clothes, which we're going to get into here in a minute. I carry the backpack, and when I get on the plane, this is my thing. Backpacks here, shoulder bags here. So I walk to where my seat is, I go to the overhead, boom, this one's in the overhead, boom, my butt's in the seat, this is in front of me, and this goes right under the seat. It's a three-step process. One over, one butt in seat, one bag under seat. That's it, one, two, three. It's like a race every time and I can do it in like 32 seconds flat. Let's move on to packing the clothing bag. So I guess when it comes to what's allowed, the first thing we should talk about is the 3-1-1 rule. You're only allowed to have three ounces of any liquid in any one container. So any container that you bring on board the plane, anything that comes through TSA, cannot be more than three ounces. So you could get a regular old plain travel bottle and put your own hair gel or shampoo into that or conditioner or what have you, where you buy these prepackaged things in the travel section, what have you. So uh, conditioner, shampoo, toothpaste, even hair gel. Okay, yes, I use this cheap crap because I'm a cheap guy. So something like this, right out. This is, this is eight ounces. They're totally going to make you take this bag out and uh, they'll go through this and this goes right in the trash. That's the, uh, the three ounce part of it, the three one one. Nothing can be more than three ounces when you take it on there. And when you buy a travel size, it's typically in three or 3.1 ounce bottles. Okay. So that's the three part of the three one one. All of these things can only go into a one quart Ziploc bag. So I'm going to put all of these guys in here. Now, there's no limit to the number of things that you're allowed to put in here as far as I'm aware. 311 means if every one of these is under 3 ounces, then as many of these mofos as I can get in there, I'm allowed to take only one one-quart bag per passenger, okay? Now, if those numbers seem arbitrary to you, they do me too. Who came up with this? So that's your 311 rule, and they will bust you on this every time. If you try getting through TSA security with this or this product placement, it's just not going to happen. This just makes good sense to me too, because if your shampoo starts leaking, wouldn't it be better to have it in a sealed bag? So I just think that was a good idea to begin with anyway. Now, because I travel so often, this bag is always just full and ready to go for me whenever I'm ready to go. I just grab it out from underneath the cabinet and throw it in the bag and go. But uh, you'll definitely need one of these. Um, get these at Walmart or Target or just any cheap store for a dollar or two because you need that free toothbrush, right? Hairbrush, that makes sense. Um, you're allowed, of course, to take a razor and always have a little backup, throw those in there. You're actually allowed to take nail clippers. This has been, I've had this with me for about six months now, hasn't attracted any attention. Of course, I need deodorant so I don't stink as bad as normal. Um, 
I use them for cleaning out my AirPods and for, of course, cleaning out my ears. And so those go in there. And then, of course, my 311 bag. And now I am just good to go. So that is that on the toiletries. And anything else that you may specifically need or want yourself, as long as you're not violating the 311 rule. All right? Now, if you're not TSA pre-checked, they're going to tell you when you go through the x-ray that all your liquids and gels have to come out before they go in the x-ray machine. What that means is you got to go in your bag and take this out and put it on the x-ray machine separate. Don't do it. Just trust me on this. Do have it packed where it's going to be easy and convenient to get to. Just in case they do call you on it, go, oh, you, I see your toothpaste in there. You got to take it out. But I've never once been forced to, I'm pre-check, but even before I got pre-check, I never had to take this out. So when they're yelling at you, all oh, liquids out, all gels out, this, that, the other, just leave your shit in your bag. And they go, do you have any gels or liquids in there? You go, nope. That's the right answer. Nope. And if they do call you out on it, it's not like they're going to write you a ticket. Okay. So just leave this in there, but make it to where it's easy to get to just in case you get uh, called on, just in case you accidentally uh, violate the 311 rule. Welcome to my closet. And now what to pack clothing wise. Obviously, I'm not going to take one of everything, but I do need to take some things that are sensible for the trip that I'm going on. Are you going on a vacation? Are you going on a business trip? Are you going to go swimming? Are you going to work out? Are you going to be walking a lot? These are the kind of things you need to ask yourself. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pack for uh, the trip that I'm taking with my boys. But these are like some work polos that I wear. And typically if I'm going for, say, four days, I'm wearing a shirt that morning that I'm packing in. And then I just basically go, well, I'm going for four more days. So there's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday shirt. That's it. Just right off the rack. As far as I'm concerned, uh, one shirt for each day that you're going, maybe one pair of pants for every two days that you're going. I sort of uh, hope you're not grossed out by it, but I kind of wear a day, air a day on my pants. Um, I'm not as tolerant to that with shirts, underwear, and socks. If you really want to gross out on the underwear, you could do front side, back side, inside, outside and get four uses out of one pair. No. So for every day that I'm going, I pack a pair of underwear, a pair of socks, and a clean shirt for that day. And you might just throw in an extra shirt just in case. And then I always get the question, you know, like, well, what if you get stuck there longer, right? Um, what if your trip gets extended? Every hotel I've ever been to has a laundry. You'll, you'll always be able to wash the clothes that you take with you. So there's no sense in taking half your wardrobe with you. Just pack exactly what you need. Now, I'm not fancy at all. All I use is this soft-sided, flexible gym bag. It's a nice, deep, just an uh, oversized uh, gym bag, basically. And the first thing that I do when I'm packing, this is just my method. You don't have to do this. Do what works for you. First thing I do is just throw that in there. Okay, just right in the middle. So what kind of shoes should I bring? If I were going on a business trip, which is my normal, I take casual shoes, uh, casual business shoes, something like this or this. And I always have a pair of tennis shoes as well. So I always go with at least two pairs of shoes. Very rarely do I pack three. If I'm going over a weekend, I'll pack three. But I'm going on a vacation to New York City where we're gonna spend a lot of time walking around. So the shoes that I'm wearing now, they're pretty cool for just, you know, being casual walking around, but they're probably not my best all day walking around shoes. Probably gonna use something more like this for walking around every day, all day. Now here's where we're gonna to try to get a little bit clever and save some space. So I need socks and I'm going for four days. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna grab four pairs of socks and I'm gonna tuck them in the shoes. And I know this seems like, oh, so what, everybody does that. You'd be surprised how many people are like, 
Oh my God, never thought of that. So that's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and that just saved a ton of room. And when I put these in there, uh, I put the sole side to my toiletry bag with the soft side of the shoe to the outside. And that's going to feel a lot better to me as this thing is swinging on my hip as I carry it through the airport. Now again, I don't get too fancy with anything that I do. So I'm just going to take these off the hanger and kind of fold them up like a lazy retail clothing store worker. And then all four of those will find their way right into the end of the bag. So now you're looking straight down on, on the bag. I've got my shoes with my toiletry bag in the middle there. I've got four shirts for the week packed right there. The next thing I like to put in there is the underwear. So again, I'm going to be gone for four days. So there's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Now, if the trip is longer than that, because this is kind of evened out across the top here, I could also tuck them. Remember, I got these little corners that were made by the toes back here, right? And that might come in for us handy later too, as I'm going to show you here in a bit, okay? And I just need a couple pairs of pants. Again, nothing fancy, just pants there, pants there. And I try to get them to where they're, they're kind of meshed with each other. And that's that. We're done. And then also, this is going to mush down really easy. It's going to fit really easily into an overhead compartment. Now, you're going on vacation, so you might be bringing something back extra. Like this. I'm a Hard Rock Cafe fanboy, as you know. And I might have just been to Atlanta and picked up a new 50 year souvenir glass and I don't want it to break on the way home. So I need to pack it in here. I don't want to just put it on top. Somebody else is going to put something on that and crush it for me. So it's not that big a deal. Let's take these guys out, stick that in there and then just kind of wrap my pants around it if I want to. It also wouldn't hurt if you had a diet and exercise plan that required that you bring some gym shorts. And that can be packed around there. And a gym shirt, like this one. This one especially, shout out to that guy, to pack around this. Never pack your bag always to the hilt or you won't be able to bring even an, an extra ballpoint pen back. The way I travel, I never check a bag. Never. I don't want to be separated from my luggage. Even the people that valet their bags, I don't like to do that because if, if my plane was late landing and I had to rush to the next plane, that's not good for me because now i got to stand there for five or ten minutes waiting for them to bring the bag up. I had a layover in Chicago, and by a twist of fate, my luggage got transferred, but I did not. And then I was stuck in Chicago with no luggage. If I always have my backpack and this with me, then I always have my computer in one bag and my clothes in the other. I always have my own toothbrush. I'm always ready to go. So that's my kind of packing 101 for somebody that's just taking short trips. This is not packing for your 10 days in Europe. This is your three or four days in New York or Vegas or that week long trip to Orlando or something like that. Um, so just to recap, 311, learn that, know it, live it. I did have the opportunity to travel with a female travel companion who had about 19,000 hair products and there was no getting around it. We had to check her bag. And if that's what you gotta do, then all of this stuff is out the window and you do that. So that's that, hope this helps. And hopefully we'll see some New York videos from this trip coming up with the boys.